Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Stevie K and this is Ree. Hi guys. Uh, today we're watching India is becoming its own Silicon Valley. Um, it's been requested so many times and finally we've come down to the list to do that one. Uh, but before I press play, I'm going to just say make sure you uh, follow us on Instagram. I'll put the links down below and on Twitter. And also, we have another channel which is Magic Flix TV where we'll be doing vlogging, gaming, and various other things. Please do make sure you click on and subscribe to that channel as well and give us your support. Uh, it'll be great to have you guys on board. And uh, I'm just going to press play and see what it's about because lots of people told us to watch it, so it... that time we have a look. Here we go. Yeah. Really busy, eh? Good morning, all. So, what is telemarketing? Selling products over telephone. Social graces. What are social graces? Good morning. Thank you. You want to do the inbound call with me? You say? My name is Sayyid. I'm calling behalf of Elika. I'm calling you on behalf of Elik. My name is Asha. How can I help you? How may I help you? Uh, good morning. Welcome to Dr. Wellness. My name is Krishna. How may I help you? Perfect. This is a call center in Bangalore. Call centers were among the first outsourced tech companies to appear in India. And they're still here. Uh, good morning. This is Krishna. How may I help you? The location of BFW in Bangalore. Call center work has been outsourced from America to India for decades. But this call center is different. Hello? because many of their clients are actually Indian. When we actually looked at the growth of India, there were a lot of domestic companies that were actually, you know, that were, uh, you know, growing. You decided to do just the domestic market, just companies that are in India. Okay, and that actually did wonders. The fact that Transact Global has found success by serving largely its own market is an indication of just how far the market has come. India's IT sector has evolved so far out of its call center beginnings that it's now a $150 billion industry. This is the corporate headquarters of Emphasis, one of the biggest IT services firms in all of Bangalore. Why did India emerge, and Bangalore specifically, as sort of the site for this kind of growth? We've always had in India a fairly large STEM population, right? We've had a history of mathematics and science and engineering and medicine. Back in the 80s, IBM was launching the PC, Microsoft was launching the desktop operating system, and computers were going mainstream. So there was an opportunity for the Indian talent to be taken to where the work was, which was the United States. As telecom infrastructure became more stable, mm -hmm. that led to this development of the offshore services. That provided a much faster way to write software, because if you can do it pretty much 24 hours a day. And then came Y2K. What was the problem with Y2K that India had to face? The problem was the Western world had written programs that couldn't handle 00, zero at the end. How do you make sure that the computers don't fail when they come across a 00? zero? And that's the year 2000. That's the year 2000. Some members of Congress are worried that the computer glitch will lead to dangerous problems on the world's infrastructure. That's when a lot of our Indian companies that were young and nascent showed the world they had the ability to fix problems and do it in a way that you can actually afford it. And over the last 25 years, you know, this has kind of become a massive hub for the global companies to build software that essentially runs the world. Indian tech workers are a worldwide phenomenon, with 850,000 entering the global workforce every year. A primary source for this talent are the country's 23 Indian Institutes of Technology. They're among the most competitive engineering schools in the world. The IITs were set up in the 50s as institutions for engineering, uh, education and research, modeled after MIT and Cambridge and other things. So this is India's sort of best and this brightest is, yeah. engineers. So people get in here and after they finish their undergraduate, I mean, they're sought after by all kinds of companies, Google, uh, Facebook, the banks. What are the most sort of popular or more competitive programs? Computer science. Nerds. Nerds that are smarter than me. <laughs> oh, God. 
majority in it, eh? well, unless it's a all guys campus or something. These kids all no. scored the best on the entrance exam. Yes. yes. Right. Wow. So even better than everyone at IIT, these are the kids who are the best of the best. Yes. What is it like teaching them? Very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think one of these kids is going to, like, maybe do something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but it seems for some of these kids, their dream is no longer to work in the U.S. Instead, they'd prefer to innovate right here in India. Wow. There is an inherent sense of wanting to contribute to India's GDP. And there's a lot of emphasis on entrepreneurship and starting on your own. This well, push towards know. entrepreneurship has become the primary focus, as basic software engineering skills are no longer enough. In response to this shifting landscape, a number of startup incubators have sprung up to nurture creative ideas out of mathematically built minds. Science and technology are the backbone of Indian education. But if you want to go from a back-end coder to a front office visionary, you got to learn how to sell. So I've come to an incubator for startups called Commencement, which coaches would-be disruptors in the art of the pitch. How important is the pitch? Pitch is the moment of truth. Just having an engineering degree is not enough. If you're going to build the business builders and the job creators of tomorrow, they have to think about the world as a market. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon to you both. Uh, we are coming from a company uh, called Oshio Water. Fix my gadgets. I need a bag. Change pay. Uh, you know, the lot of gadgets are getting introduced to India. Okay. So how we uh, how we uh, how we are actually we are creating a basically a customer convenience through uh, this web portal. We'll just go through a video walk to where you can understand how to pay using ChangePay. Welcome to Paradise Hotel. I would like to stay here for two days. Sorry, I don't have money. Do you accept change pay? Yes. Yeah, we'll have to work on that. You do this all the time, right? Right. What is sort of common about the sort of shortcomings of how people tend to pitch ideas like this? Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, the big one is how do you tell a story? This is what you get from people who know too much. They've been an expert in delivering projects, making products in a very corporate environment. But I think we have to also come up with a solid business model which is innovative. Hello, uh, I'm from Music Money Labs. I'm Gopal. We are a music technology company that teaches, scales music education. It works very simply. I mean, you just put it in front of you and you start singing. And it tells you if your frequency is off mm -hmm. or if you're off the beat. We show you detailed breakdown of how can you improve and you can track your progress over time. In India, you have so much diversity in music. And my motivation is to build a digital infrastructure for the Indian heritage. This is cool because it's sort of like very very culturally Indian things becoming potentially like a globally useful product. But also it takes a non-music person to figure out a new way to do music. To do music. Yeah, right. Because it didn't take a very social Zuckerberg to figure out the social network. Right, 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 right. So, exactly. He's got the stars in his eyes as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> For many of these would-be entrepreneurs, the hope is to one day join the fast-growing list of Silicon Valley sized success stories who make up much of India's decent venture okay. capitalist culture. I'm at a golf club in Mumbai, and I'm playing around with one of the top VCs in the country. He's been named one of the 50 most influential business people in all of India, and he's funded some of the most successful online ventures that this country's ever seen. So what was your big, like, first success back in India? Nice. nice Good I job. was sitting in my office met one of these sort of fellows uh, who does the traditional matchmaking. Like arranged marriages? Yeah, it occurred to me that why not put this stuff up on the internet? And so that idea was born and we started out with Shadi.com. Wow. There you go. What were the next investments that you made? About 2011, I met a young guy called Bhavish and he was looking at raising some capital for an on-demand cap service mm -hmm. through your app. And so I wrote him a check in 2011, and today, of course, the company is worth close to $5 billion. Wow. Would you say that the tech scene in India is at an inflection point in any fashion? Indians have tasted blood, and given the cultural advantages that India has in many ways, I think it's a foregone conclusion that Indians will drive the coming tech revolution. You're already seeing it. As India's tech sector grows more sophisticated, its entrepreneurs are becoming more ambitious. 
driving development aimed at saving our lives and the environment. Oh wow! I'm in like a operating room. Yes. Oh, I can actually like, see my arm. Oh yeah, no, it's, 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 it's brown because we're in India. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. You can do the complete advanced cardiac life support protocol. And you really feel that you're doing it. Oh, well, oh my god. That's a thing. That's a real thing. Yes. It's a real thing. Yes, yes. That's amazing. While many technology companies here are focused on serving the world's economy, I've come to the garage of Altigreen, a startup that's trying to take a hands-on approach at solving some of India's problems. In India, there are 1.2 million people dying early every year because of poor air quality. So what do you guys do? We allow people to take their existing vehicle, bring it into our place, convert it into a hybrid uh -huh. at $1,000, saving 25% in fuel and 25% in emissions. Sure. I mean, are you trying to compete with like a Tesla? No. Tesla is still selling $100,000 cars. That doesn't work for India. What we're doing here is we're democratizing the use of electric technology. Amazing. Entrepreneurship is exploding oh, here, with over 5,000 verified startups currently operating nationwide. Projections are so good, in fact, that the blue chip prospects who originally left India to succeed in America are beginning to return. I understand that most of you guys studied in the U.S. or lived in the U.S. at some point. And so, like, why did you come back? Look at populations in India, right? We are building something that could potentially be used by a billion people. And it's a lot like the Wild West. The rules are being made. Bangalore is very, very cosmopolitan now. There are people from not just all over India, people from all over the world, people who've lived abroad and come back. Uh, I had a job offer interest from Google New York, but uh, I met some really nice people in Bangalore that time, and I thought that why not give it a shot? So you gave up working at Google to come back so and do a, a startup. Wow. Given sort of the increasing amount of like, like anti-immigrant feelings in the United States? Did that contribute to your decision to move here? You know, Trump coming to power has not been good for anybody. And I think that is sort of forcing the, the growth. Well, guys, to Bangalore, to coming home, to making something happen. To many, the future of technology doesn't lie in Silicon Valley, but in places like Bangalore. Recent evidence suggests that this is already happening, as emerging economies like India's make up almost 60% of global GDP, according to the IMF. Opportunities abound. Software, where all the value addition lies, is now our calling card as a country. Bangalore is a city primed to emerge as a global leader in tech, with its nation's investment in education and innovation paving the way for a potential overthrow of Silicon Valley as the center of the tech universe. Do you think Bangalore would ever overtake Silicon Valley as the center of engineering production? Could. Could. What Bangalore's got going for it is the scale of India. It's like one billion people, right? Yeah. So even if you've got like one out of 2,000 being engineers, right. you've got a large population to pick from. Yeah. While the US and Europe continue to be the leading spenders, the center of gravity of the global economy is seen to be moving east. How did you guys like found companies? When I was 10 years old, I was very curious in electronics and technology. So cool. I developed a drone which can detect and destroy landmines. Wow. Cool. Okay. Wow. Consequently, Asia will account for at least 25% of global ER&D spend before the turn of this decade. And that defines the age that we live in. And I want to congratulate all of you who have made this possible the fastest growing segment in the entire IT BPM industry. That doesn't surprise me one bit. No, no, yeah. no. But it's good to see, what I was going to say, well, it's good to see that, you know, like, outside of India, people just think, see India, the place that, oh, there's movies and there's songs and that, you know, that it, it's not just that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's good to see the other side that they're showing that, you know what, there's so much more to it. it they've got some of the richest people there, smartest people there. And, you know, like, like I said, they own, they own basically Silicon Valley, like, you know, they've got all these, like, the youngest people who are... Mm really brainy and smart but I think the difference with them is 
they creating stuff that other countries can't create but at the same time they're creating it with it in mind that the people around have to be able to afford what they're doing mm -hmm. so they can't do like a tesla hundred thousand yeah. pound car that's electrical or this that and the other which is for the global market they're going well people here wouldn't be paying that so how can we create something similar or as good as mm -hmm. or if not better for a price that people can afford, afford. that and whereas when like with the whole um, call center thing many companies were opening up for the world for all them lot like, because it for them it was like cost cutting yeah, if we send you over there we don't India. have to pay as much sure. and this that and the other and then now they're going well why can't we just, just open those call centers for our own people yeah. our own companies here you know what i mean why are we doing it for other people for it's it is absolutely true. and that, that was one thing i remember growing up when they were like saying oh they're going to be moved over there you could see that so many people lost their jobs lost here their jobs but it wasn't to move to india and, and, so and they didn't do it because oh let's help people in india get jobs or anything like that and wages you know it'll be less, good it was like less wages and less going out their pockets and yeah big companies but so let's move it up yeah uh, and taxes become different then most of it like banks so, and everything had gone towards india loads of yeah and so it ended up becoming like that i mean don't get us wrong it was like you know it's fair fair enough for people there to get work but what we're saying is for the big major companies their intention wasn't let's help this other country mm -hmm. and the people get jobs it was more or less like we don't want to pay these people and we don't want to pay these taxes let's move it somewhere else where we don't have to do that and, they and this is why they, they're happy for um, people to come up like, you know, they want people like from India, Google, whatever, the big companies like that, because they know the bright students and bright yeah. minds. But, uh, you know, just looking at it, like you can just see uh, the stuff that they can do. Well, they've always done, you know, it's really good, isn't it? Um, but like I said, I, what, the reason why I did want to watch this was, um, you can all see the other side, like like I say, you can see the movies, you can see the food, you can do all that. But the other, you know, like learning now, doing this YouTube thing, it, reacting and watching the people who are rich, um, the things that, you know, the country is capable of doing, the greatest stuff about it. And, you know, obviously about the tech side and all that. There's so much to it. Mm. That bit even people who live there don't even know that yeah. side really because it's nice because even know. like family of mine have all like travelled out, um, especially the boys because they're educated from to India, get jobs they? either to in Canada, or America, Canada, so. America. But it's nice to see these people saying, you know, like they want to stay in back. They've been there and they've come back and they've, they've gone. Back, you know what? Like, this is our, this Do you want to work for them? Yeah. Google and stuff. No? This is our country. Why not work for our country and, and make it better? They yeah. can do something. Yeah. yeah. They got the capability and you it know. Was. And it is. It's. it's the fast growing place, look at it. Mm. It's grown a lot mm. um, and do really well. Anyway, guys, that was the video. I hope you guys like it. Make sure you click on the like, uh, share, and subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one. See you on the next Take one. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye.